we're going to talk about another optimization problem. We're going to be given, this time, a graph with weights on edges, but also directions. In this case, I have an oriented graph, just like we talked about when we were talking about transitively, transitively orientable graphs. In other words, between any two vertices, I have either an edge over or an edge back, but I don't have one in each direction. If, if I made my example more complicated, I could have edges over and edges back. In fact, I could have multiple edges. You can have one highway from Boston to New York, which has a certain length, but you take a different route, you still get from Boston to New York, and it's a different length. And last time I checked, you could, in New York, turn around and drive back to Boston. So you can have edges over and edges back. You can have multiple edges in either direction, either or both directions. Okay. My example, just for visual purposes, is a little simpler. I start with a root node. The root node is colored red. And my goal is to find the shortest path from the root to all other cities, to all other vertices. Now, we could say, um, I just want to know the shortest path from vertex 1 to vertex 7. Don't give me all that other stuff. But it will turn out that finding 1 is computationally equivalent to finding them all. And, and for that reason, I, I've stated it that way. Our problem is, given a root node with non-negative weights, find for each vertex a directed path from the root to x so that the sum of the weights on the edges is as small as possible. Now, this is something like spanning trees, but not quite, because we have directions. On the, Paths that you choose, you can all, only walk on the edges in one direction. All right, so now let's talk about this from a philosophical standpoint first. I could say to you, the distance from R to X is infinite. Now, what would I mean by that? Now, here's what I do mean by it. I don't know how to get from R to X. So if I don't know how to get there, then the distance is infinite. I could have a candidate path. I want to go from here to there. And I know how to do it. I go over here, touch the corner of the desk. I go over here touch the whiteboard. I walk down the whiteboard. Then I go over to this black chair. And then I, I get from the black chair to where I really wanted to go. That's a way. It may not be a very good way, but it is a way. So our implementation is going to have this flavor. Sometime in some cases, I won't even have a clue as to how to get there. And I'll say the distance is infinite and give up. In other instances, I will have a candidate path. It might be very non-optimal. Where I'm trying to go it might be right there, but I don't see that because I'm looking at data. I'm not looking in a picture. So I don't discover it for a long while. I have this candidate path. I say it's 280 miles when the answer is really 50 miles. But later, my 280 path will become a 200 path. And for a while, I'll live with the idea, I think it's 200 miles. Then afterwards, I'll get, well, it's really only 170. And I'll get a better path. Then I'll get rid of the 170. It'll become 68. Then 68 will become 64 then 55, and then finally I'll get it down to 50, and it'll stay at 50 forever. And I'll also have a notion 
that some paths are temporary and some distances are temporary and other distances and other paths are permanent. Permanent means, of course, I know they're optimal, and once they're optimal, I'll never change them. The ones that are temporary, I don't know. They might be optimal, they may not. I'll continue to be open to change. 